Hello, I'm Sheldon Axler, the author of Linear Algebra Done Right. This video discusses part three of the section of the book titled Self-Adjoint and Normal Operators. In this video, we will focus on normal operators. Let's start this video with the definition of a normal operator. An operator on an inner product space is called normal if it commutes with its adjoint. In other words, an operator T is normal if and only if t times t star equals t star times t. Clearly, every self-adjoint operator is normal, because if t is self-adjoint, then t star is equal to t, and hence the commutivity equation above is clearly satisfied. Let's look at an operator that is normal but not self-adjoint. We'll work on the space F2 with the standard inner product. Let T be the operator on F2, whose matrix, with respect to the standard orthonormal basis, is the matrix shown here. This operator is not self-adjoint, because when I take the conjugate transpose of the matrix, I do not get the same thing, because the um, off-diagonal entries minus 3 and 3 are not equal in this case. Let's compute the matrix of T times its adjoint. So we've got the matrix of T on the left, the, the um, conjugate transpose of that matrix on the right. We do the usual matrix multiplication, and we get the matrix shown here. 13 on the diagonals, 0 in the two off-diagonal entries. Now let's compute the matrix of T star T, in other words, in the other order. And we do that matrix computation, which you should do and verify, and we get the same matrix. Because T T star and T star T have the same matrix, they must be equal operators. In other words, T times T star is equal to T star times T. That's the definition of being normal. Thus, this operator T is normal, even though it is not self-adjoint. Our next result states that an operator T is normal if and only if the norm of T of V is equal to the norm of T star of V for every vector V. Before we get to the proof of this result, notice that it implies that the null space of T is equal to the null space of T star if T is a normal operator. The reason for this is that the null space of T is a set of vectors V such that T of V is 0, which you could restate as a set of vectors V such that the norm of T of V is equal to 0. Thus, the equation in the result above shows that if T is normal, then T and T star have the same null space. Now let's look at the proof of the result in the box. Let T be an operator on V. T is normal if and only if T star T equals T T star, and that equation could be written as shown on the right here. The operator T star T minus T T star is self-adjoint, as is easy to check, and thus that operator is zero if and only if, when we apply it to any vector V, inner product with V, we get 0. Let's just use additivity in the first slot to rewrite that, as now shown here. Finally, in each of those inner products, flip to the other side, meaning in the first one, flip the T star to the other side. It becomes a T, so we have T of V, inner product T of V, which is the norm of T of V squared on the left. On the right, flip the T to the other side of the inner product, it becomes a T star of V. Then we have T star of V in a product T star of V, which is the norm of T star of V squared. And we've highlighted in red the first equivalence and the last one. And you can see that those two conditions being equivalent is exactly the statement of the theorem. This completes the proof of that theorem. Our next result states that if T is a normal operator, and V is an eigenvector of T with eigenvalue lambda, then V is also an eigenvector of the adjoint of T with eigenvalue the complex conjugate of lambda. A weaker result is also true without the hypothesis that T is normal. Specifically, if T is any operator on our inner product space V, and lambda is an eigenvalue of T, then the complex conjugate of lambda is an eigenvalue of T star. However, in general, the eigenvectors 
for t and the eigenvectors for t star are quite different. This result says that for normal operators, those sets of eigenvectors are the same. Let's look at the proof of this result, which is pretty easy. We are assuming that t is normal. The so is t minus lambda times the identity, as you should verify. Now, we have 0 is equal to the norm of t minus lambda i applied to v, and that's because v is an eigenvector of t corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda, so t of v is equal to lambda v. Now we get the second equation. This is where we use the hypothesis that t is normal, and thus t minus lambda i is normal. We know that for normal operators, the adjoint applied to a vector gives something with the same norm as the original operator applied to the vector. And now the adjoint of t minus lambda i is equal to the adjoint of t minus the complex conjugate of lambda times i. The last equation says that t star of v is equal to lambda bar of v, which precisely is what it means for v to be an eigenvector of t star with eigenvalue lambda bar. This completes the proof. The last result in this video states that if t is a normal operator, then the eigenvectors of t corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal. Because every self-adjoint operator is normal, this also implies that the eigenvectors of a self-adjoint operator corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal. Let's look at the proof for this result. We are assuming that t is a normal operator. Suppose alpha and beta are distinct eigenvalues of t with corresponding eigenvectors u and v. This means that t of u is equal to alpha times u, and t of v is equal to beta times v. We also have t star of v is the complex conjugate of beta applied to v. The reason for that is our previous result, which said that if v is an eigenvector for t, then v is also an eigenvector for t star with eigenvalue, the complex conjugate, of the eigenvalue corresponding to v. Thus again, we have t star of v is equal to the complex conjugate of beta times v. Thus we have the following equation. We look at alpha minus beta times the inner product of u with v. And we just um, use a distributive property. And for the first term, we bring alpha on the inside in the first slot. And for the second term, we bring beta inside in the second slot, where it becomes the complex conjugate of beta by the definition of what an inner product does. Now, in the first inner product, we rewrite alpha times u as t applied to u. And in the second inner product, we write the complex conjugate of beta times v as t star of v, as shown above. Now, in the last inner product, flip the t star to the other side, giving us t of u inner product v minus t of u inner product v, which is 0. Now the first and last terms in this series of equations are highlighted in red. We know that alpha is not equal to beta. That's our um, assumption that the eigenvalues are distinct. So alpha minus beta is not 0. We can divide by alpha minus beta concluding that the inner product of u with v is equal to 0. In other words, u and v are orthogonal, which is exactly what we wanted to prove. This completes the proof. We have been dealing with inner product spaces. Among the most important inner products are those defined by integrals. Thus, we conclude this video with a beautiful painting of Isaac Newton, one of the inventors of calculus and thus of integral calculus. Newton did not pose for this painting because it was made by British poet and artist William Blake several decades after Newton died, but it's a great picture. This concludes part three of the video on self-adjoint and normal operators.